Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be covering and introducing Nebula. Uh, I do have my colleague on the uh, on with me called Matthew Locke. Um, just to give you a bit of brief background in regards to myself, I'm the UK sales engineer. I've been working with Zizel now for uh, around 10 years from a reseller point of view and as part of an ISP. So technical is sort of my background. Um, and Matt, if you would just like to come in and introduce yourself. Yep. Yeah. Uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt. Uh, I'm partner account manager here at Zizel. Um, I suppose my role in today's webinar is to answer any questions that you may have, any chats that you may have. I will try and reply to uh, all of your questions in a timely manner. And if there's any that I am unsure of, I will make sure that we come back to them at the end of the webinar. Um, but um, yep, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the Nebula overview. Thank you very much, Matt. All right, so just to give you a uh, brief sort of overview of uh, Nebula, and Nebula is our centralized control platform for traditional networks, so you're talking access points, switches, and gateways. So typically speaking, in a traditional network, um, you would need to sort of purchase the equipment, and as you can as you can see at the bottom, the investment in man hours and the investment in infrastructure to support clients, it can be quite costly. So first off, you would have to purchase the equipment, then you would have to install the equipment. And as you can imagine, this takes up a lot of man hours, not only on site, but also in the office uh, prior to the installation date. Then you would set up some form of monitoring equipment. So SNMP, ICMP, or like a syslog server. Uh, you will then set up um, access to the equipment from an external source. So that could be either over a VPN or an MPLS network, or you could traditionally set up uh, NAT rules and allow yourself to get into it that way. You would then potentially have a monitoring platform. So there are some paid options and some open source options. Um, so you've got like SolarWinds and Zabbix. Uh, these can actually be quite um, costly in time to actually get them set up. I've had experience with Zabbix in the past. And being able to set up all the dependencies or the triggers it can be quite daunting uh, then you've got the uh, data storage so you would be looking at sort of on-premise servers some form of virtual platform or even cloud servers or potentially even servers in the data center which again could be very costly um, when it comes to actually managing the devices, so uh, updates, changing settings, uh, it can be quite complex. You'll obviously have some form of database where you record or your usernames and passwords in order to access it. Um, but as I say, it can become quite complex, especially if it is quite a large network. Then you would set up some sort of user and device management, so authentication, so potentially Radius or Active Directory to be able to manage your users and your devices when they're actually logging onto the network. Now, when we introduce Nebula, one of the key things that we're looking at doing is actually reducing the amount of time it takes and the amount of money that it costs to actually implement it. You're never gonna be able to get away from purchasing the equipment, so that is always the first step, is actually obtaining the equipment. Installing the equipment can be uh, cut down dramatically. You can actually have it up and running in sort of 10 minutes, and we'll touch on that a little bit later on as to the process of that. Uh, monitoring the equipment's not necessary in this point, so you don't need any additional uh, form of um, uh, setting up in regards to that because it is all managed on the cloud. So as soon as it is installed, it is then available for monitoring. Access to the equipment, as mentioned on the previous slide, you would set up like a VPN, MPLS, or some form of NATIN. Uh, this isn't required, again, because it's all accessible on a, uh, a single web browser. Uh, the monitoring platform uh, comes part and parcel with it, so it does give you a unified platform in which you can monitor, configure, and update any sort of switching, security, and wireless devices. Data storage is something that you don't need because the platform itself does have its own storage center. So that's that's one less cost and one less headache for you guys when you are implementing it. And it will provide you up to 365 days reporting as well. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry to interject here, Dan. Um, I, have had, I, I hope everyone can hear us. Um, Maria Proyo, Proyo, hopefully that's uh, about correctly, says so uh, that they cannot hear anything. Um, are we all able to hear Daniel today? 
uh, we have just had uh, some people specifying that they can hear us, so it looks like it could be a localised issue. Okay. And, okay. and just to confirm that this webinar will be recorded, so if for whatever reason you can't hear us, uh, you can always play it back and catch the bits that you have missed. So thank you, everybody, for jumping on there and just confirming that you can hear. Not too bad. Okay. Okay, so moving on, in regards to the uh, simplified updates and the settings changes, uh, you can update and schedule updates uh, all centrally, so it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to specifically go around, configure it all. Uh, it is very unified in how it handles it. User and device management. So you've got the ability to uh, use existing methods such as radius along with a built-in um, user and device management access on the actual uh, uh, portal, as well as being able to use uh, captive portals as well. One of the biggest benefits about um, Nebula is that you can actually set it up without actually physically unboxing it. So um, all the uh, so a lot of the selected models are actually being shipped out with QR codes on the specific boxes themselves, which gives you the ability to scan it with uh, the app and onboard it onto the uh, platform very easily. Or you can just grab the serial number and MAC address and put it into the web browser. Uh, one thing that you can also do is like a bulk import. So if, for instance, you do buy quite a lot of devices, so say like you've got 50, you can actually request like a CSV file of all the serial numbers and MAC addresses of the devices that you're going to get. And it will allow you to actually register them all onto Nebula and get them all in there. So pretty much as soon as they've got a uh, internet connection, they will download its configuration, uh, simplifying that on-site uh, installation process. So once once you physically plug it in, I think the uh, I think the record we've got is like three and a half minutes to get a device online, uh, plug it into the internet, it downloads its config in sort of record timing. So the more devices you sort of connect to it, um, if you're doing like a bulk update and things like that, as soon as they get an internet connection, they will uh, onboard themselves in a matter of minutes. So one of the biggest things about Nebula is that you can pretty much sit back and relax. You configure everything onto a web browser just with a few simple clicks. No additional software, no hardware, no controlling software required. It is all cloud-based and accessible on a, on a uh, laptop, PC, uh, Mac, um, just simply using a web browser as long as you've got an, uh, an internet connection, that is. So again, with it being uh, on the web, you can access it anywhere. So whether you're on holiday, not that you would want to, but you will be able to access it and administer it as well. So really getting rid of them headaches of having to dial into a, uh, a VPN or, or hand it over to uh, potentially somebody who might not be as, as savvy with the portal as what yourself is. There is a mobile app, both supported by iOS and Android, in which you can sort of create accounts, you can configure the Wi-Fi, and yeah, it can all be done at the palm of your hand, wherever you are. I've got the app on my phone for my home network. I use it quite a lot just to monitor what the kids are doing and making sure that they're not abusing my internet. So one of the abilities that we have put into it, targeted towards the hospitality areas and potential coffee shops and places like that is the captive portal. So this will give you the ability to give a splash screen, potentially a promotional um, website so that you can sort of promote your business and show customers exactly what's available in your establishment. Uh, and on there, you can configure user and device management at the same time. And it gives you that added bit of protection, knowing that the guests can't contact each other's devices and potentially uh, uh, do something malicious on your network. So you've got that added bit of security as well. Now, as ISIL, we do strive for a gold standard, gold standard wireless. One of the, uh, well, a few of the things that we actually implement into it is a smart mesh. So some of you that might be familiar with our controllers will notice that the Zymesh function 
which allows you to create like a wireless bridge between two wireless devices where you might not be able to get cables. This does support smart meshing, which is very simple to set up and very effective. So the WPA2 Enterprise Security, now this will actually allow you to hook into like a, an external radio server. So instead of maintaining all the users on the portal itself, you can use probably what's already implemented, such as a radio server. Uh, roaming as standard. So uh, in regards to moving from one access point to another, it's, it's pretty seamless in how it handles it. So you can pretty much go from one side of the building to the next side and move between the access points as you uh, sort of roam through the establishment. So Nebula itself is very intelligent in how it handles it and so are the devices that Zyze will do offer. One of them is uh, intelligent power over ethernet. And so this allows you to dynamically allocate the PoE given to the devices, which means you can actually maximize the amount of devices uh, that you can get into a PoE switch. So phones, access points, uh, anything which requires a sort of PoE draw. Uh, and for the added bit of sort of protection, it allows you to create ACLs, which is the uh, access control uh, list to create rules, uh, VLAN configuration, uh, the 8021.x authentication, the loop guard, um, DHCP server guard, and the IGMP snooping. So the IGMP snooping is uh, obviously for IPTV uh, sort of technology. So the visual uh, switch stacking allows you to, in essence, stack the switches so that they pretty much act as one and you can sort of configure them in a, in a bulk as well. So if you wanted to set the same sort of uh, PoE ports and things like that, it allows you to group them together all in a single plane of glass. One of the features that I like is uh, are the automatic and scheduled uh, updates and firmware upgrades we can actually do. Um, typically speaking, most upgrades need to be done outside of working hours. So what this can do is if you schedule it, it does mean that you don't have to physically get somebody working outside of working hours to perform these. Uh, one of the clever things that you can actually do is you can, uh, you can specify individual types of devices to upgrade at certain times. So for instance, you can upgrade all the access points first, then maybe the switches and then the gateway. Because obviously if you were to update the gateway at the same time as the access point, then that will cause loss of internet connectivity. Therefore, it might not be able to pull down its firmware. So Nebula does also support site-to-site -site VPNs. Um, so site-to-site -site hub and spoke VPNs, uh, and it also does allow uh, client VPNs as well, uh, for allowing remote users to connect into the network and to access local resources. Nebula does support multi-tenant uh, environment. So you, you have uh, an organization level in which you can create multiple organizations and then underneath that you can also create multiple sites, which means from one single web browser, you have the ability not only to manage one customer, but to manage many customers, making it a much more unified solution moving forward and to enhance your support that you do offer your clients uh, on a daily basis. So as you can see on the right hand side, uh, it shows you a little snippet of the MSP portal. Um, so it shows you all the licenses, the status of the licenses when they expire and allows you from an MSP point of view to, to manage your customers much more effectively and to ensure that they are kept up to date with all the renewals so that they don't lose function to any of the services that are provided. Um, now Nebula it is, it is free. Um, to a certain degree for the enhanced features, then you can get the professional pack. But one thing that we don't do, like some of our competitors, is if you miss your renewal date, we won't chop off so that you can't access your local resources or the internet. It will just roll back to the free version, giving you still connectivity and a lot of features in there as well.
You do have a uh, quick overview to uh, be able to see the full state of the organization as well. So it, uh, you can actually just visually see on, on one screen the status of all the organizations um, to potentially avoid any specific bad situations and to stay on top of the support and, and deal with it in a sort of quick, timely manner. So for each site, you do get a dashboard, which gives you an overall health view of uh, all your devices. So you can see it'll show you how many access points are online, how many you have in total, uh, the same with the switches, the same with the gateways. And it also does show you the PoE power as well. So what's consumed out of your PoE budget on the switches as well. On the right hand side, you can see that it actually does give you a sort of snapshot, a little summary of the applications that you use. So it shows you sort of internet traffic that is only available when you sort of have the gateway implemented because you not you don't specifically need to have a Nebula gateway to use the rest of the devices. You can have just an access point or an access point on a switch or just a switch. And as I did mention, it is free, so you can start using Nebula straight away. If obviously you want to go for the enhanced features, then that is a sort of subscribe service, but we will touch on that a little, little bit later. So, and to give you a quick rundown, uh, we've got a full product range for the Nebula side of things. So we've got the, uh, the security, which is the NSG range. We've got the switches, which is the NSW range, and we have the wireless access points, with the, which is the NAP range. So just to sort of uh, introduce you to Nebula Flex, um, for you that don't know, Nebula Flex is a software upgrade to devices which was once upon a time wasn't available to go onto Nebula. It's simply just upgrading the firmware and it will give you the ability to actually move it onto the Nebula Control Center. That doesn't mean when you move it to the Nebula Control Center, you're stuck with it on there. You can always reset it and turn it back into a uh, standalone sort of function. So and on the Nebula Flex Pro side of things, you have triple mode. So uh, like the access points, they might have a controller. So like our NXC range or our USG ranges. Uh, but it also supports the Nebula as well as a standalone management of that as well. Uh, some of our access points do support smart antenna and Wi-Fi health. Uh, I know Wi-Fi health is uh, being introduced into it uh, in the coming months, which as again, we will touch on later on. And uh, for you, on the professional part, you can do a lifetime license as well, meaning that it's a one-off payment and then you get all the professional features and so no, no renewal dates on that. And all of our hardware do include lifetime warranties. So that's end of life plus five years. Um, and we do do a next business day replacement as well to ensure that yourself or your client's networks is maintained uh, like a 99.9% .9 uptime and we will uh, actively get that resolved for you and shipped out to you as quickly as possible. So it's uh, quick and easy. You pretty much create an account on Nebula, nebula.zizel.com and that's if you haven't already got one. Uh, make sure the devices are on the latest firmware which you can download from our website, zizel.com and then you can just register the device, uh, again, either using the app with a QR code, uh, either manually inputting the MAC address or the serial number, or uh, the bulk sort of uh, import as well via a CSV file. And it's your choice. If you want to use Nebula, carry on using it. If you don't, just unregister the device. It will then reset itself and then you can access it as you would do out of the box in a standalone web managed mode. So currently Nebula Flex is available on selected models and switches and wireless access points. If you've got already got a supported model, you can literally just download the firmware uh, and then start the onboarding process. So uh, create an account, register it, and then uh, and then it's on there.
So being able to add more value to what you can offer your customers, we do have the uh, additional add-on. So we've got the professional pack uh, across all of our devices, and you also have the security pack, which contains the security features for the NSG model specifically, such as antivirus uh, in that uh, IDP. Uh, so that's always something to bear in mind, depending on your sort of client's requirements as well. So um, wireless health, uh, this is a better way of really the access points uh, establishing potential clients that might be uh, affecting the performance of your network. So the current uh, supported versions are the NWA1123 ACHD, uh, the 5123ACHD, and the WAC6303DS. And they will be available in June 2019. So just to sort of go through the sort of auditing side of things, uh, you do on the free version get seven days uh, reporting. Uh, once you do upgrade to the uh, Pro Pack, you do get 365 days. And again, because you don't have to physically store any of this information, it's all available on the cloud. You don't have to have any outlay on hard drive space or service to be able to handle that. So some of the things that we sort of support as status alerts. So when things go offline, I mean, I constantly get them all the time when I'm messing around with my test platform. So you get email and app push notifications to advise you that a particular device has gone down. Uh, that way, at least you can jump on it straight away and make sure that either it's, it's been physically rebooted by the end user or if they require any additional support on that. So the 365 day statistics uh, uh, on the device monitoring, the client monitoring, as well as the device event log. So if things have changed, it does log all that information as well. Uh, the custom reports, which you can set up, range up to six months uh, as a summary report. And you Hi there, Dan. Hello, mate. Hi there. So I've got a, uh, a, a relative question uh, from Paul. Um, in relation to the logs, he asks, can you archive the logs from Nebula as in a CSV file download for longer retention? Yeah, I mean, uh, move, uh, moving down the slide that I'm currently working on, it does show you that you can export it to both CSV and XML files as well. So yes, if you get into the point where you're going to exceed your 365 days, best off at, uh, pulling it down on a CSV file. And obviously, you can do that on a monthly, bi-monthly, six-monthly, or sort of just before the year the year end sort of thing to make sure you retain them on, on, in a local area. Obviously, with a CSV file and XML file, you can have uh, sort of like crystal reportings and things like that. So you can actually tailor your own reports based on what management or the clients may need. Okay. Uh, so it automatically on the pro version, it actually will build up a network topology as well. So it will show you what your access, what switches your access points plugged into, what gateways your switches are plugged into, and it just helps you visually see how the topology topology is. So if you are sending an engineer to site to potentially correct a cable fault, then you can sort of point them in the right direction. And it also creates an automatic VPN topology as well if you do have site to site VPNs or client to site VPNs as well. Uh, one of the things that obviously we do look at doing is being able to control bandwidth. So on the on the switches, for instance, you can configure the specific ports with an uplink and a downlink uh, bandwidth management, um, as well as doing it per client as well. Uh, on the access points, you can specifically uh, allow a, a certain SSID to only draw uh, so much bandwidth from your network as well, being able to give you that flexibility, especially in some areas where Broadband could be on a sort of slow scale. So Nebula does support IPTV, so it supports multicast control, uh, IGMP uh, protocol. Uh, you can monitor and report on the channels. Uh, you can automatically optimize the network as well from machine learning to make it run more effectively in, in a sort of busy environment. And then you do have some advanced reporting uh, options as well. So as you can see, there's a bit of a snippet on the right hand side uh, showing you the sort of reporting uh, 
uh, view that you get. You can see how many channels you've got, how many are in use, and currently how many viewers you have as well. Uh, it will uh, allow you to report on the uh, the channels, the uses, usage, the popularity, and the least use, and by which devices. So obviously, if there's certain channels that are being used, then you can obviously look at trying to uh, remove them from the service. So one of the good things is as well is if you uh, if you have quite a lot of sites that you're trying to implement for quite a big client, you can actually configure templates as well, which will mirror the site-wide settings and it will allow you to push the configurations out to the sites as well to, to further um, improve the scalability of it and, and reducing the amount of man hours you're actually spending uh, configuring all of this. Uh, you can clone sites as well, so uh, if all the sites are pretty much going to be the same, you will clone the sites and it's just a case of registering that site to uh, the device to that site. And you'll be able to sort of create backup and restore points as well, so that if you're trying to make some changes which you might not be comfortable doing and you don't want to break the network, obviously you can always roll it back, giving you that extra peace of mind. And then a new feature we are introducing in June of this year is uh, the Facebook Wi-Fi. So this will allow customers to use the Facebook credentials to log in and check into uh, the wireless. And this just really helps you get the demographics of who uses the business Wi-Fi. And then you'll be able to uh, access key information and help your business grow, uh, especially with social media becoming uh, ever so popular. So just to touch on the Nebula security side of things. So as mentioned, uh, there is a security pack available if you do uh, opt in for the NSG into your network. This will contain the antivirus, the content filtering, the applica application intelligence and control, uh, the IDP, which is intrusion detection and prevention. And uh, then you've also got some Nebula security service analytic tools as well. So on the right hand side, you can sort of see the NSS uh, analysis. So it sort of gives you a little uh, a little graph, a little pie chart, and a, a list of uh, sites and uh, destinations and sort of applications that people use, so that you can see how what's being used across it, and potentially identify any malicious uh, um, or abused sort of applications that you might not want in your network. It helps you narrow down and being able to jump on top of that before it becomes quite a nuisance and affects productivity. It will allow you to understand the internet usage, uh, categories, um, the sort of IP addresses of the devices it's coming from. So again, you can actually narrow down Go over to Joe Bloggs, who sat there potentially on uh, on Candy Crush or something, and say, oh, "You're meant to be working, no Candy Crush." And then you can sort of narrow down and make sure, as I say, you don't lose productivity. So the NSS analysis also uh, helps you keep track of any potential uh, malicious antivirus uh, or virus or malicious software that's acting on the network, which obviously helps protect your network, especially from a security point of view. Um, with the internet, social media going the way it's going, there's a lot more threats out there, which we, we as a company are trying to reduce because we know that people are reliant on the internet and that data security is one of our key focuses. So this screen just really runs you through the uh, the licensing and what's uh, what's available. So as you can see, the, the Nebula Free does offer you a lot of functions in terms of uh, what you can do with it. So you've got the smart meshing uh, functionality, captive portals, uh, obviously being able to centralize uh, your devices and, and mod monitor them with the seven days rolling um, uh, monitoring uh, the reporting as well. And then as you can see with a professional pack, you get the added extra bits of um, features. So you get the uh, the full visual topology, you get the Facebook Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi reporting, which again is available in June. And one of the key things as well that you can use the advanced support feature within the actual web browser to actually directly 
provide um, tickets and, and raise tickets with our support team who, who obviously get notified and it, and it creates a ticket in their ticketing system as well. And the uh, security pack, that includes the app patrol, the IDP, the antivirus and the content filtering, along with the security reporting. So you're not really restricted in how you can actually license it. If you just wanted the security packs, you can just go for the security pack. If for whatever reason you, you don't want it and you just want the professional pack, you can also do that as well. And again, you can have all three of them as well. So it gives you that extra bit of flexibility in terms of licensing the features you want so that you can only license for the features that you actually feel will be a benefit to yourself or your clients. So we're just going to really touch on the uh, products available in the NS, uh, in the uh, Nebula range. So we've got the NSG50, the NSG100, and the NSG200, all of which uh, include a one year's pro pack and security pack as well. So you can actually test out these features for the first year. And then after that, you can obviously opt into subscribing it. And then it'll be an, like an annual for the security, or you can either do the annual or the perpetual lifetime license with the pro pack. One of the key things to uh, think about when you are implementing any of the NSGs into the uh, into your clients is their internet connectivity and their throughput. As you can see on the graph, they do increase as you go up further through the portfolio. But if you are enabling all the UTM features, so all the security pack features, um, say for instance, your customer has a 100 meg line, uh, with the NSG 100, it will only provide you 90 meg throughput, so you'll be losing that 10 meg. So I would always recommend going up to the to the higher tier to give them that future proofing as well if they ever look at upgrading their internet line as well in the future. In addition to them, three we do have the new NSG 300, and as you can see, the throughput does dramatically increase as well as you step through the portfolio. So currently, they're the only gateways which are supported by Nebula. Um, I do believe in the roadmap, we are looking at introducing, introducing the ATP and potentially the USG into that uh, area at the moment, but there is no sort of agreed lead time on that, but it is something that is being considered. So we've got a Nebula and a Nebula Flex switches. So. Um, on the left-hand side, you've got the GS1920 version twos. They come in an eight, a 24, and a 48 port. Um, the eight's high-powered, so it's got PoE, uh, and the 24 and the 48 also have them options as well. And it does support L uh, layer two multicast as well, which will be available very shortly. Uh, the XGS1930 series, uh, Pretty much, obviously, the same as 1920, apart from the fact you do get some added uh, additional features, such as or 10 gig uplink ports as well for them sort of busier networks as well. And the NSW range, uh, again, supports uh, uh, rapid spanning tree. It supports uh, link aggregation as well. So you can team ports together to maximize throughput and resilience. And that also does uh, support layer two multicast as well. So just to give you a quick overview of the switches that do support Nebula. So you've got the Nebula specific switches, the NS100, 200, uh, and then you've got the um, GS1920s and the XGS1930s as well. So the NSWs do come with a one year uh, as standard. Uh, it is an optional add-on for any of the Nebula Flex switches. So here are the access points, which are Nebula only access points. So they can only be managed by the Nebula com uh, control platform. As you can see, we've got the NAT 102, the 203, 303, and the 353, all of which come with a three year pro pack. And as you can see, we've got two by two and three by three spatial streams for them as well. Uh, the internal optimized antenna on the 203 is quite a good one, especially if you're installing them on a wall, because it does allow you to switch how the radio pattern broadcasts to stop it from interfering with sort of the upper levels and to push it out so you get greater coverage on the actual floor. 
Uh, the 303 contains a real nice technology called the smart antenna. Now, smart antenna technology is, is really good in high density areas and offering the users the best user experience. If you want me to go into a bit more technical detail in regards to that, you can always contact me offline and then we can go through that and I can run you through exactly what benefits that will provide your customers. So just before I move on, the NAP353 it is an external graded access point, which does require external antennas. So this is good for sort of um, outdoor sports halls, potentially in schools or um, uh, anywhere. Like some people even install them in swimming pools. Well, not physically in the swimming pools, but on the walls to allow uh, wireless coverage around the, uh, the dry areas. And here are Nebula Flex access points. As you can see, we've got the 1123AC V2, the 1123AC Pro, uh, and the AC HD. Um, now, the AC HD I have I've actually implemented at home. Um, I actually took out what was one of our competitors' access points, and it's actually increased my coverage at least three times. I can get it to the bottom of the garden with that specific one. And that is a Wave 2 access point as well. But that one, to me, is very highly recommended. Uh, the NWA 1302AC it is a flat panel one, usually favoured for sort of uh, hotels or bed and breakfasts. Um, it does contain the, uh, the dynamic smart antenna technology as well. Uh, and I find that they've got a very slick design and look very nice when they are implemented. Okay, so we've got the NWA 5123AC HD. It's a three by three access point, and it's uh, it's also a wave two as well. Um, we've got the uh, WAC 6303DS, which uh, is a three by three, and also contains a dynamic smart antenna technology again, and it also is a wave two access point. So just to give you an overview of all the uh, wireless access points that are supported within Nebula, so you've got the NAP range, which is obviously the Nebula specific ones, and then you've got the ones that I've just sort of touched on, which is the 1123s, 1302, 5123, and the WAC 6303. As you can see, three years uh, included with the, with the NAP series. It's an optional add-on of the NWA, the Nebula Flex ones. But with the Nebula Flex Pro, you do get three years. You get a one year, and then you get a promo extra two year, which is currently being run as well. You can see that some of them on the smart mesh are uh, currently not supported, but that is going to be due in December, which will obviously allow them to uh, create the smart mesh and create a wireless bridge to extend the Wi-Fi into areas where you can't really cable. Pretty good for the sort of listed buildings. So, um, and uh, in June, we are introducing more access points uh, into the uh, range. So you've got the WAC 6103DI, 6502DE, uh, the DS, uh, the 6503DS, the 6552DS, and the 6553DE as well. And they all come with a standard one year on that, and they will be smart mesh uh, supported straight away. So, and just to let you know that we are currently running a promotion as well on our Nebula Flex devices. So for any Nebula Flex devices which are registered between now and April, you will be entered into a prize draw automatically as soon as it's registered to be in with the chance of winning an iPad Pro. So obviously with the devices, you do get the, uh, the added benefits of the licenses anyway. So uh, why not register it and potentially walk away with an iPad Pro? And that's available on all our uh, any access point and switch with Nebula Flex purchased at any time. So even if you've purchased it beginning of the year, upgrade the firmware, get it registered, and then you're in there for a chance to win. That's available to any reseller as ISIL and is available from the 1st of April to the 30th of April. Okay, so that really concludes our webinar for today. So if you've got any questions or queries, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them for you. Hi there, Dan. Um, there were a couple of questions. I think I've answered quite a few of them to the best of my ability. Um, we uh, have a question from Paul. 
in relation to is there any news on AX Wi-Fi 6 access points for Nebula? As far as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, uh, AX hasn't been ratified yet or something along those lines, but... No, it hasn't as of yet, but I am uh, I'm over in Germany in September for sort of our internal training on the AX equipment. So it is coming out towards what well, we're thinking towards the end of the year, beginning of next year. Uh, I suspect, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I suspect they will probably be Nebula Flex enabled straight away, knowing that Nebula is quite a uh, favoured platform. And it gives you the ability to run it either low, uh, standalone or on Nebula. Uh, I think adding it as a Nebula Flex device would be the way we would want to go with that particular product. Excellent. Okay, thanks for that one. Uh, I've had a question from David that I can answer. So David asks, we have about 40 customers with uh, the USG range. Uh, I take these are separate systems to the Nebula system uh, of series. In answer to your question, David, yes, the USGs are separate to ne the, the Nebula. Um, and there are no plans at this stage to take the USGs into the Nebula platform. Um, so they are separate at the moment. My understanding is, and don't quote me on this, um, in the future, um, and the future, to please take this with a pinch of salt, um, in terms of time scales, um, but the advanced threat protection range that we have, uh, we did a webinar on this last week, the advanced threat protection system will um, eventually uh, be brought across to uh, Nebula. Um, for yourself, Dan, I had a question from Damien earlier. Um, so in relation to where is the um, data held and where is the that's uh, data held, um, I answered that the data is held in uh, uh, worked via AWS um, and is highly encrypted. It's used by the likes of Netflix, by the likes of um, large corporations. So it's very secure. Um, at which point, Jay, Damien asked, what jurisdiction is the data held for GDPR? Uh, I mean, in regards to that, I can discuss that with you in a bit more detail, Damien. So if you want, I can sort of give you a call this afternoon just to sort of run through that. Uh, I can also say that you've mentioned an, uh, another question as well in regards to the 16 VLAN limitation that it currently does still apply. Uh, I am waiting for a sort of further roadmap as to whether or not that's going to be increased. Uh, I suspect it will probably be increased once we start looking at bringing the ATP range onto the Nebula platform. Okay, sir. So, um, general question from Mark. Um, we are going to see, are we going to see more ruggedized, uh, rugged access point POEs, etc.? Um, so at the moment we have one, one outdoor AP uh, on Nebula. We have um, an access point that is also non-Nebula um, that um, you can put outdoor. Um, but as far as I know, that's, that is it at the moment. Um, so hopefully that that answers that one. Um, uh, rugged switches for Nebula. So this comes from Paul Barnes. What about ruggedized switches? Yes, we do have ruggedized switches available within the range, uh, Paul. Um, they are not Nebula based, um, but we do have uh, ruggedized switches. We're currently working on an opportunity um, with a large train line company who need ruggedized switching. Um, so they're looking at our organized switches. If you want uh, more information, Paul, uh, you've got my email. Just drop me an email and I'll send you some data sheets in relation to that. Hopefully that answers your question there, Paul. Um, I have a question more for you, Dan, here, I believe, from Fran Andre Francisco Souza. He was wondering if we have a peer-to-peer -peer out door fiber access point um we do have some access points which allow you to use the sort of Zymesh mesh and the meshing function to create like a wireless bridge um but again it all depends what sort of um what sort of range you're looking for uh, but I, I mean i can always speak to you uh, as a one-to-one -one basis and and discuss the requirements potential projects that you might be looking into uh, and i can advise you accordingly as to whether or not we've got a specific device which can sort of meet your criteria Okay, uh, another one. Uh, so someone asked earlier, how does this compare to the Ubiquiti network system? Uh, in regards to what? 
Um, so, I mean, typically when I speak to people, um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Ubiquiti, you have to use something called Cloud Keys. Um, in terms of account management, I don't believe there is any account management, so sort of speaking to a person. Um, but I suppose that sort of area, is that something you can... Uh, so yeah, so they're on about the Ubiquity uh, management system. So in regards to that, that's obviously um, being able to manage the Ubiquity side of their devices. I mean, in regards, it is, it is comparable because this allows us to manage our devices as well. Um, but again, uh, it's sort of the aftercare support you get from Zizel, as well as the customer feedback we take uh, very seriously. And we actually do feed that back to HQ in Taiwan in regards to helping our products be developed towards what our audience and what our customers actually require. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we answered this one. And I believe it was in relation to the... Um, the NSG, so the Nebula Security Gateways, Damien asks, do yeah. they support USB 4G? USB 4G. So uh, the NSGs do offer a, a 4G failover for load balancing purposes as well. Uh, so, yeah, that is uh, available as well as it is also available on some of our other security devices, which are currently in Nebula enabled as well. Excellent. Um, and I think uh, it would be wise to uh, speak to uh, Mark, who's on the call. Uh, he wanted to discuss later offline the topology element um, is, is, is quite a big interest. So if we could, uh, Mark, if you could uh, send us your details um, in, in the chat, I'll make sure that gets passed over to Daniel for you. Um, yeah, I have, I have allocated some time out to sort of follow up uh, with individual uh, people in regards to experience on the questions as well. So Damien and Mark, I'll more than happily give you a call this afternoon. But as mentioned, Mark, if you can please send us across um, your details, we'll be able to uh, contact you directly. Yeah. So um, in, in, in regards to the CSV file bulk uh, for loading, uh, potentially you should be able to get that off your uh, disks when you actually order it. If not, then it might be something that you'll actually have to uh, create manually. Uh, which sounds a bit painful, but it can be relatively easy once you've sort of finalised the final process. But again, I can discuss this further with you later. So I can see Paul's put in the question in, in regards to any plans uh, on enhancing the NSG uh, hardware similar to the USG 100 and the USG 110. Uh, I'll tell you what, Paul, I'll look at uh, speaking to you directly just to uh, get a bit more clarification as to what you mean in regards to that. And then we can sort of discuss it and give you a bit more information in regards to that. So in regards to the question that you put, Damien, in regards to the NSG fitting with the SD1 from last week, so the, v, uh, the VPN series is the only uh, gateway currently supporting SD1. So that sits on the Nebula Orchestrator side of things. Uh, the, N, the NSGs won't be going into the uh, SD1 sort of deployment, but it does have internal uh, VPN workings as well. Um, that they already do support. So, uh, but we can, as as I say, I'm already scheduled to call you. So I'll uh, I'll discuss that in more detail with you. And Ben's also interested in the topology as well. So Ben, I'll look I'll look at contacting you directly as well at some point either this afternoon or tomorrow morning just to discuss that in a bit more detail. Uh, but looking at the questions. Um, it looks like we've probably uh, covered them all. If any of you feel that we haven't sort of covered your questions or provided you sort of adequate answers, um, feel free to sort of email uh, daniel.marsh at zizel.co.uk and I'll endeavour to sort of get back to you with a, a quick response into regards to any sort of queries or any sort of questions you may have. So with that being concluded then, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, we are running a recorded webinar on this in a couple of weeks' time, and then there will be another webinar two weeks after that as well, sort of touching on the uh, Nebula Flex and the security elements of uh, uh, the Nebula Control Center and what you can do. So um, uh, your account manager will probably be in touch to provide your links and registration details for that. But again, thank you all for attending today. Uh, you've been a brilliant audience, and thank you for the engaging questions as well. And no, Damien, you don't get any more Amazon vouchers on this one. <laughs> that was an incentive for the last one.
Thank you ever so much, everybody. Bye-bye.